right? They're like, no. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much for coming today. So my name is Andrea Nikolai, and I work with the University of Florida Extension, and I'm a family and consumer sciences agent, and I teach, I'm a registered dietitian also, um, so I really love teaching food and nutrition classes. So thank you all for coming today. We'll see if I can move to the next slide. <laughs> okay, we got it. So that's me. You can also see me. And then I just wanted to say we're an equal opportunity institution. And so continuing on. So if you have any um, problems or complaints, you can complain. <laughs> and that is how. And then here's uh, the chat box. If you haven't done Zoom in a little bit, if you see those three dots, um, sometimes it's under those. And then there's a chat box and you can type in stuff there. Or there's actually it just says chat and that'll make it really simple. So sometimes you have to hover over the top or the bottom of the screen to get those controls to show up. And then I'm gonna send you guys an evaluation following this. And so if you guys could help me out in doing it, I would be great, um, really appreciate it. Okay, let's get started. So eat to beat diabetes. So first of all, we're gonna talk about in our county and managing diabetes, what foods raise your blood sugar. And then we're going to identify carbohydrates. Meal planning is easy with the diabetic my plate. And then I will try to talk fast enough so we have time. We're gonna play family feud. So everyone has to stay awake for that. Okay, so here we have, first of all, <laughs> Denise is Yanni. Okay, so let me see here. Keep accidentally enlarging. Okay. So diabetes in Polk County, it's higher than the average. As you can see in the United States, it's 10.6%. In Florida, it's 11.7%. And in Polk, it's 15.4%. So, you know, we're a rural county. Um, maybe possibly considered urban in some maps now, uh, but we have a higher rate than the people around us. So for whatever reason, it's really important here. Polk County has higher diabetes hospitalizations rates than, other, than most other counties in Florida. And then um, if you didn't know, like you guys might have diabetes and then you know this, but healthcare costs for people with diabetes is about 2.3 times higher than people who don't have diabetes. So if you do have diabetes, I definitely feel that, that pain, especially now. Um, okay, so do you guys, if you could write in the chat, write in the chat, sorry, I was reading the <laughs> text here. Um, okay, what do you think are the top five causes of death in Polk County? If you guys could write in the chat what you think. Heart disease, Chris, you got number one right there. Drugs, suicide, it's luckily not drugs or suicide. DUI. You guys are, okay, there's other ones. Yeah, stress probably causes these. Heart attack. So heart is definitely by far number one. Stroke is on there. Heart disease, cancer, cancer is number two. And accidents used to be number five. Um, actually, it's seven. Diabetes, I think. It's moved down to six or seven. Seven, actually. Okay, <laughs> so you got some good ones. Can you believe this? I've been working here for over, uh, I guess, a long time now. And I always like update this uh, table just to kind of be aware of what our causes are. And COVID happened to move into the number three spot. It wasn't even on the map at all before. So that is crazy uh, that, it's, that we've had that many people die of that. Yeah. So heart disease, cancer is number two, COVID, stroke, and chronic lower respiratory disease. So, yep, there you go, Denise. Good job. And so I guess just if you look at it, you know, one and two and four and five, they're all, you know, diet related or, you know, things that maybe we can do to improve our health. So I just wanted to share that. There's a lot on there. So most people with diabetes, so diabetes is actually the seventh. So um, six is unintentional injury and then seven is diabetes. Um, but most people who have diabetes, they don't die of diabetes, they die of heart disease. So. That's why heart disease is number one. Okay, so just to explain diabetes a little bit, um, what percent or which one do you guys think is most common, type two or type one? Yeah, so um, type two, you guys got it. And so, you know, like it's in America, 90 to 95% of the people who have diabetes, it's type two. And so, Steve, I think you were asking, um, oh, I just saw your question here. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, diabetes 
is the actual cause of death then for those people that are number seven with that. But most people die before they die of diabetes, they die of something else, which would be a like heart disease or cancer or something like that. And so just to explain diabetes in case, sometimes I think it's really confusing for people. So insulin, so when you eat food, right, your body makes insulin. Um, and that, that insulin is very special because it goes and helps the food go into the cells. So after you have food, um, some of it turns to glucose and the glucose needs to go in our cells to give us energy. So that's like carbohydrates that give us energy. And so here you have on the top picture, you can see that insulin, he's opening the door for the guys and then they go into the cells and then they give you energy. So on the bottom left one, it's like the glucose from what you ate then from the carbohydrates, it's in the blood. So it's on the left side there. And then the insulin, he's like, it's kind of working. There's like a little bit there but it's having trouble. Like you see how that guy managed to squeeze through the door. So it's eventually getting in there, but it's just taking a while. Okay. So remember that. So then in type one, then, so all the glucose is staying in the blood. So people with type one diabetes, they don't even make insulin at all. And so that's why um, if you have type one diabetes, you have to take insulin or you will not live um, because you don't even have any to work with and then you wouldn't have any energy. So that's, that's how it works. Okay. So a lot of people have type two, so that's where that insulin isn't working so well. So the goal with what we're eating then, um, and our physical activity is to help that insulin work better. And so we can, we're going to talk about how you can do that. All right. So, so the goal with diabetes management is to keep your blood sugar levels at a normal or near normal level. And so why do you guys think, uh, you should do that? <laughs> why would you want to try to keep it at a normal or near normal level? Like, why do you even care if you can still walk around fine either way? What do you guys think? Not to have diabetes. He is, it would be managed. And the reason that you do want to try to keep it at normal or near normal levels is because you just don't want to, you want to prevent the tissue damage caused by too much sugar in the bloodstream. So the problem is somebody described it to me like this once, like if you have too much sugar in your blood, um, and so that's like I eat some carbohydrates and then um, they break down into that sugar or blood glucose. So blood glucose and blood sugar, same thing. And so they break down into the the sugar then and then it's kind of like if they stay in your blood it makes the blood kind of sticky so it's hard for the sticky blood to move throughout your system and so it's like you know it's starting at the heart and then by the time like you know because it's sticky it's like kind of all this sugar is in the blood then it's really hard to get down to the feet and you know the eyes are farther away from the heart too and your kidneys they, they're having a hard trouble with all that sticky blood and the nervous system and stuff like that so that it can damage those nerves and the places you'll start to notice it the places farther away from your heart so yeah you got it steve so then like your eyes you know how sometimes like i've um, been with people who have diabetes and they kind of have a blurry vision a little bit and that's because there's so much sugar in the blood then that causes that um, there could be other causes, but um, off, like, you know, that would be a symptom that maybe they should get checked out. And the other one is like, if you can't really feel your feet that well, that's why it's important if you have diabetes to check your feet every day. Because a nurse, I used to teach this class once, she told me a man had stepped on a nail and he did not even know it uh, just because he couldn't feel his feet. And, and so he lost like um, his foot and part of his leg when he f found it, you know, so that's why you want to just check your um feet regularly, like every day, just to make sure they don't have cuts or things like that if you can't um, feel very well. So that's why it's really important to get the blood sugar down because then you can go through life fine with diabetes without having any complications. But just if you have, if you have your blood sugar too high for too long, um, it's really going to cause havoc on you. So we don't want that. And we don't want you to lose any limbs or anything like that. That's often happens or people get um, kidney problems because of that. So you don't want to have to go on dialysis either. So what affects how well diabetes is controlled? So the good news, many of them are controlled by us. So that's good. 
So there's diet, what we eat then, if we take our medication, and then our how much we move around. So even small changes in these can really affect your blood sugar. So I just want you to know if you get nothing else from this presentation, you definitely can do it and you can manage your blood sugar. It's um, just a combination of those three there um, and you can get it under control and then you can go through life without having any problems and that is definitely possible. So the medication, if you're on it, it's just really important to take it. Um, take it, yeah, as directed when you're supposed to because um, it's there for a reason. And if you don't know why it's there, then make sure you ask your doctor because sometimes, um, you know, they'll, they'll help you ex help you understand and maybe, you know, help you see why it's important. And yeah, and Denise is right. It makes healing difficult too. It's, you know, if you think about it, if you have um, a lot of blood sugar in your blood or a lot of sugar in your blood, say like for, you know, say it gets getting sticky, you know, it's hard to get all the healing stuff down to where it needs to heal. So, um, okay. And I could share the slides too. I mean, thanks. All right, so moving on again. All right, so does it, what is the A1C? Can you guys tell me what that is? What is the hemoglobin A1C? Any guesses? Denise, thanks Denise. Total blood sugar level over a three month period. Yes, good job. So that is, um, it's kind of like, you know, you can go to the doctor and they can check your blood sugar and they can say to you, okay, it's 105. And that was just a snapshot in time. So the A1C is great for us um, because then as like a doctor, I, you know, you would be able to check a person's blood sugar and you'd be able to see like what it normally is over time. Cause maybe they just happen to have a soda, but they've never had a soda ever other than that day. And so the A1C would kind of tell the history of how you've been doing. And so that's a really, really, really important number. And the goal is to keep it under seven. And so if it's above there, and if it's a lot above there, like 11 or 10 or nine, um, that's an alarm bell for you. Like maybe we can check with um, what you're eating or your activity or your medicine, because that um, we definitely don't want that because that's when you're gonna start having problems with your nerves and things like that. So. Okay. And so then these are also just, um, it's recommended to check your blood sugar, especially if you have no idea where you're at. And so these are some good targets, but you can talk to your doctor what the best target would be for you. But the A1C is really important. So why, so I'm going to talk about mostly just the diet part today. So why is diet apartment? because it can greatly improve your blood sugar control. So by eating a consistent amount of food every day and then having the carbohydrates with fat, protein, or fiber, and we'll talk about this, that can really help. So it's um, also, you know, eating healthy because you know how we said most people with diabetes die of heart disease. So it's like, we wanna eat healthy because it's good for our heart, but to keep your blood sugar in control, one of the most important things is to have that carbohydrate consistently over time. So it's like you don't want too much at one time or too little at one time. And that'll really help decrease the risk of complications. And then a dietitian can help you make a flute plan. And definitely I agree on the plate. Okay, so um, you know how, remember on that picture where the insulin was trying to open the door? Um, if you think about it, you know, it's like working a little bit. So some glucose is getting in, into the cell. So it's like, you just don't want to eat too much carbohydrate because that breaks down to the glucose. You just don't want to have too much of it at one time because that'll overwhelm that door right there because it's not really working that well anyway. You know, so it's not like, um, it's kind of like if you were trying to escape a building and um, the door was like, it was really hard to open. And so it'd be way better if people weren't like just all crowding around the door at one time. It'd be better if there's like a steady stream going to the door to get out because that door is really hard to open. So then just, you know, trying to like <laughs> go steady stream versus all like all at once. And so that's why somebody with diabetes, it's really important not to have like um, an entire cake at a whole time. Just it would not be the way to do it. You know, if you wanted to eat a cake, you're like, I'm eating sweets, I don't care, whatever, that's fine, you can. Um, just the best thing would be to have them over time. So like you have a little piece of cake for breakfast, then you have a little bit for morning snack, and then you have like a little bit for lunch. And like, you know, just trying to keep it would help actually help that, that glucose get into the cell at a normal level and it wouldn't spike your blood sugar. Okay, so 
um, yeah, it looks like the Mediterranean diet, that plate you guys are talking about. Um, I'm not sure if there's a protein on there. So calories come from four things, carbohydrate, fat, protein, and alcohol. Which one is the most important when we're looking at blood sugar? Can you guys tell me? Yes, Brooke. Yes, way to go. Carbohydrates. So that's the one that's the most important. Did you guys know about 90% of the carbohydrate that you eat is converted into glucose within two hours of eating? That's kind of a fun fact. So it's like... Um, yeah, convert it into that glucose to give you energy within two hours of eating. And so things like fat, that can help stabilize the blood sugar and it extends the digestion. So it's maybe like slower, you know, maybe more towards the two hours. Um, and then fiber also helps with that. And then so does protein. So we'll talk about that. So then what things help slow down that? Because so you want to keep it slow, remember? Because you don't want it spiking all at one time because then the, the door is really hard to open. So you don't want it all at one time. So then thinking about the fiber helps slow it down. So you guys, where does fiber come from? Where do you get fiber? Because that'll help you. Plants. Way to go, Steve. Yes. Whole grains, plants, vegetables, beans. Yeah, you guys got it. So plants, way to go. So that one, plants is where it comes from. It doesn't come from any animal foods at all. There's no fiber in meat. There's no fiber in oils or butters. It only comes from plants, which is pretty cool because almost all the plants then have fiber and some have more than others. But that's why um, it's good to eat those whole grains and the fruits and the vegetables and things like that and nuts and seeds. And then the protein also helps stabilize the blood sugar. So protein, what doesn't by itself, protein doesn't make the blood sugar go up too much. It's just a little bit, if anything, little effect. And the same with the fat. So it's really those carbohydrates that is really important to watch. So now, like, um, yeah, I don't mean to. So it's kind of cool, like if you're looking at that meal right there. So it has some orzo, and orzo is a carbohydrate. But this salad is also having artichoke hearts, and those have a lot of fiber. And then I think it has tomatoes and those have fiber and neither of those would really raise your blood sugar. And then shrimp, that wouldn't raise your blood sugar and zucchini, that wouldn't raise your blood sugar. So it's just the orzo. So the orzo is getting balanced out by all those things. And say there's like a light dressing on there, see that might have fat and that would also help balance it out. So it's kind of better, you know, than to have, it is better to have that carbohydrate with all those different things to balance it out. All right, so looking at this again, just so you know, there's no special diabetic diet. So there's no, like, you're on a diabetic diet, you can't have that. No, that's not that. You can eat everything. It's just really important that when you eat foods, it's important to have the carbohydrates, space them out over, over the time. So, and then making helpful food choices, you know, um, that'll just help you because we know most people with diabetes die of heart disease. And so, and you also don't want other problems, like say you're having kidney problems because you have high blood sugar, you don't want other kidney problems. So that's why eating healthy carbohydrates is important. And then just spacing those meals out then and eating the carbohydrates over time, modifying fat and sodium, and then physical activity, which we'll just briefly just discuss, and then mon monitoring your blood glucose, because that can help you see where you're at. I think, um, if I ever um, end up with diabetes, I think one thing for me, I would just kind of create like, it's like a little game for me is I would check my blood sugar and see how the different foods affect me. Cause everybody's different. I have one friend who he eats watermelon and it just skyrockets. And another friend, it doesn't really affect them as much. And so it's really interesting on that. You know, you kind of want to know how it's working for you. Um, okay, yeah, thanks Steve. Okay, so just um, we, now, <laughs> now that we've talked about all that, we're kind of um, done with the harder stuff. So just what you can do now. So now you're like, okay, so I know I'm supposed to have my carbohydrates a little bit over a long period of time, right? Or just some at each meal. You want a little bit, because you want to have the energy, right? So, but you don't want too much. So just a little bit at each meal. And so the best plate, so like in school, um, the kids are taught about the my plate on the left. But if you have diabetes, it's just recommended that we have a few more of the things that won't affect the blood sugar at one time. So non-starchy vegetables, those don't increase your blood sugar very much, just minimally. Um, 
And so there's lean protein, the starch, dairy, and fruit. And so you want, what the goal is here is just for you guys to take away that you can make your plate kind of half non-starchy vegetables and then a fourth of it lean protein and then a fourth of it some sort of starch or carbohydrate and that will really help you if that's how you just make your plate at every meal and just thinking about like a fourth of it would be carbohydrate and some people you know if you're a bigger person you know you probably can eat more carbohydrate you have like a bigger plate or have a bigger um, stack of that and sometimes you know the dairy and fruit they also have carbohydrates so it's like you have those three to play with so you have starch dairy and fruit and so sometimes like a doctor might recommend you know you just have the dairy kind of as a snack later maybe not all at one meal um <laughs> so yeah um sorry i was looking at the chat again yeah so trying to get half your plate fruits or vegetables non-starchy would be an excellent idea and that can really help you a lot if that's all you remember that really really can help Okay, and yes, um, you guys are talking in the chat about a continuous glucose monitoring. Um, that it, it's becoming more common. So it's like people can have pumps now that will help you monitor your blood sugar all the time. So it's like you wear one and it has a sensor and it'll be able to tell you what your blood sugar is. Um, that's uh, like if you have questions over that, like I could definitely. Um, email me after the class, I guess, and we can talk about that. But it's a really great thing. Basically, I think it's going to help people a lot. Like if everybody could have one, you guys would all, you know, it really can help you get your blood sugar under control. So hopefully that'll be something that becomes really cheap in the future. And then we can all get one and then won't be a problem or anybody with diabetes. So just talking about the plate method, then you want to fill half of it with non-starchy vegetables, one fourth of it with lean protein. So that's like why we're choosing lean is, you know, because we want we want to keep our heart healthy. So fish, chicken, eggs, tofu, and then you can have a glass of milk or milk substitute and small piece of fruit or fruit salad. And so those are things that have carbohydrate. It's just good to have the variety because all the different vitamins and nutrients come from all the different ones. So here it is close up just for your memory, right? Very important. And then looking at it again. So if you use this method, you can create perfectly portioned meals with a healthy balance of vegetables, protein, and carbohydrates without having to count or calculate or weigh or measure. And that's um, the nice thing about this method. And that's why I was talking about it today. I think it's all you need is a plate, you know, and just trying to think of it then is divided into three sections, that plate. Um, and then, you know, thinking uh, non-starchy vegetables in the big one, then a carbohydrate foods and protein foods. And you don't have to split them up. You can mix it all in your plate, but just having that portion. So half of it non-starchy vegetables and then a fourth of each of the other ones will really help you get your blood sugar under control. So now you're like, okay, great. I got that. Yay. So the thing would be then is like, well, which are, which foods have carbohydrate? <laughs> so you're like, I know it's supposed to go in one fourth of the section, but it, if I don't know what's carbohydrate, how is this going to help me? So... Can you guys tell me what foods um, and food groups, I guess, what food groups and foods have carbohydrates? Steve, you got it. Potatoes, yes. Rice, good job. Pasta. Yep, pasta. Definitely. It's like we think of those right away. Fruit, good job. So all the fruit, everything. Come on now. No, there's like spinach. You love spinach too, Steve. It's good bread, all the starches. Yep. So starchy things. So Gloria said vegetables, what kind of vegetables? There's some that will raise your blood sugar a lot more than others. That would be like, you guys said potatoes, beans, peas. Yes. There's another vegetable that's starchy. Okay. Underground ones, but I'm actually thinking one that's above the ground. Corn. Look at all you guys. <laughs> yep, it's corn. And so corn, you got to watch that one too. So that's a starchy one. It's the corn, the potatoes, and the peas, and beans, and fruit. You guys got that. Okay. And you got the starches. You got pastas. You got um, rices and breads. But there's something else you guys are missing. What else um, has carbohydrates? Beans have fiber. Yes. Way to go. So that's why they're 
they're, they found that people who eat more beans, they actually have a lower risk of diabetes. So even though they have carbohydrate, you know, definitely still good for you. So sweets, yes. I was thinking about that one. We haven't even talked about that. So it's like uh, desserts, right? <laughs> Those have carbohydrates, usually if they have sugar at all or grains and then sweetened drinks. Good job. Sweet potatoes, yes. Okay, there's still one more. It's a whole food group. Yes, way to go. Milk and yeah, alcohol. It's not in the food group, but you're right. We do get calories from it. It's the dairy. Good job. Good job, Denise. Okay, so dairy it would be because the milk has carbohydrate. It's naturally um, kind of sweet. It just like, comes out of the cow like that. And so it's not like we add sugar to it, but it just has some carbohydrate to give us energy. And that's it's kind of cool, actually. You know, maybe that's why milk was made that way. It's like it's like the complete food, right? So it has protein, sometimes fat, and then the carbohydrates for energy. And so yogurt also has carbohydrate. Cheese, it's a tricky one. Do you guys think cheese has diabetes? Has um, carbohydrate? Do you think cheese would raise your blood sugar? It is kind of in the dairy group. Yes, way to go, you guys. Not much. No, it doesn't really. So cheese is one that doesn't really have a lot of carbohydrates, and that's because it's cheese is mostly fat and then a little bit of protein. So cheese won't raise your blood sugar. So you don't have to worry about that one. But it is like in the ice cream, obviously, and then in yogurt, and it's in milk, like cow's milk, not the other, not not in nut milks too much. But check them because sometimes they're added, have sugar added, and vegan. Okay, good call, Steve. So. Vegan cheeses, you know, they're made up of something else so that they might have the carbohydrates then. So keeping that in mind. Okay, so here, look at, you guys did awesome. Look at this, starchy vegetables, you guys got them all. Potatoes, which would be sweet potatoes or white potatoes, corn, peas, and then the beans. So by, with the beans, I mean um, the ones you have to cook a really long time, <laughs> not the green beans. The green beans are separate. They're in the non-starchy. And then all fruits and fruit juice, milk and yogurt, and then sweets, the candy cake ice cream, and sugary drinks. So it's like, here's a list, okay? So those things would all be like thinking about them. If you're gonna have any of those, they only get like a fourth of your meal, okay? So then you got the, you got, um, you can put like the dairy on the side and fruit on the side, but the other one, a fourth. So <laughs> Elizabeth now, okay, so, um, Let's see here. So foods with carbohydrates. So I just wanted to give you some picture ideas. Sometimes it helps to have a visual, I think. So just these foods all have carbohydrates. So you kind of look at them, the baked beans, obviously they have extra, their beans plus, you know, the brown sugar on top of that. And then um, different cereals and things like that, that would also moving on here. <laughs> so here's some other ones. You see how some of them might be better for us than others. Like some of them would be have some fiber, like that oat bran back there. A lot of these, though, are refined, so they could raise your blood sugar pretty quickly. And then here on the fruits, and thinking about the whole fruits have those fibers, so that's why out of this picture, the whole fruits are probably the best. The other ones um, definitely work too. You know, fresh, frozen, and canned all work. And the just, um, you know, the other ones might be a little bit more concentrated, so that could be important just to know. So the fiber helps slow it down. So then here we got the dairy ones. Okay, so here's another picture of the Ray, dairy, sweets, and juice. And then there's the starchy vegetables too. So these, if you're thinking about it on that plate then, you know how there's the whole half of the section was non-starchy, and then there's the carbohydrate section, and then there's a protein section. So if you eat these, they would have to go in the carbohydrate section. So you would probably not want to say you had rice with this then, you know, that would be a lot of carbohydrates for somebody who has diabetes because it's like extra. So you'd want to just have a little bit of rice and a little bit of peas, for instance. So do you guys see how Thanksgiving is really hard for somebody who has diabetes? It can be because there's like the stuffing, the mashed potatoes, corn, you know, like say you have black or peas. So that's why, um, you know, thinking about those meals ahead of time and deciding what you're going to have can be really um, important. Okay. So which foods have carbohydrates? Sometimes this helps too, you know, the pictures. So the ones on the left, 
they're non-starchy. Those I just think of like, you can almost, you can eat a ton of those, right? And they only will raise your blood sugar after you eat a ton of them. So <laughs> just worrying about them less, okay? So we're not even gonna worry about these things. It's like pile them on. The one on the right though, it's just, those would be the ones to make sure, you know, just having a little bit at a time can really help um, help your body use that blood sugar because they're good for you too. Do you see those over there? They have nutrients, they're vegetables, they're great. Um, but you just, when you have those, they have some starch too, which would make them carbohydrates. So they give you more energy than the ones on the left. So they're good, but just, um, you'd want to have them just over a little bit on the time. <laughs> Denise, no. okay. So she says she only likes the ones on the right, but there's so many delicious ways to explore the ones on the left. Okay. So which foods don't have carbohydrates? So, so these foods then say you already have a really high blood sugar. And you're like, I really want to eat something. And you're like, what am I going to do now? And so you just checked and it's like in the 300s and you're, but you're really hungry. And so thinking about foods that don't have carbohydrates could be really useful. So thinking about like meats, so maybe some lean meat. So maybe that was the time for some shrimp um, or meat substitutes. And then such as like eggs and cheese, those could be like, you, maybe you could have a scrambled egg um, with a little bit of olive oil and then maybe adding some vegetables. So fats and oils don't have carbohydrates really either. And then these are the other ones. And this is where all the variety comes in. Dun, dun, dun. All those non-starchy vegetables. So they have a limited impact on the blood sugar levels. So say you could have shrimp, you could have it on a big, big salad with like, um, you could have um, some shredded carrots and some tomatoes and you could have some salad dressing if you wanted, olive oil vinaigrette, and you could put on like some roasted Brussels sprouts, and you could have some turkey rolls and some cheese. And so just the idea is then like all that entire meal wouldn't raise your blood sugar, if anything, just a little bit, okay? So if you do eat those vegetables, a lot of them, they will raise your blood sugar eventually. So that is important to know, but in general, like I would say just, you know, trying to think about um, having them mostly can really help. So that would be anything from, you guys want to name some more of them? Um, can you guys name non-starchy vegetables? So these are vegetables that won't really raise your blood sugar too much unless you eat a lot of them. So you really don't have to worry about them that much. You guys name some. Peppers, yay. Greens, yep. Broccoli, yep. Onions, yep. Cucumbers, carrots, and peppers, yeah. So you could have like one of those cucumber salads with vinegar. That would be awesome if you're hungry and you have a high blood sugar. Uh, tomatoes, spinach, yes. Anything leafy green, we're good to go. So the, if you think collard greens, um, mustard greens, kale, spinach, romaine, iceberg, all of that, like calories or the calories and carbohydrates, very low. Cucumbers with chicken salad, yes, that would be a way you could do it. And then all the squash family. So squash there's the winter squash and those are the ones you just have to um remember those like would be like butternut squash yeah or acorn squash if you're from the north but most of the summer squashes that we have down here like zucchini or that yellow crooked neck squash those would be non-starchy and so green beans beets yeah beets it's crazy you know like the vegetables they go from like high starchy to like hardly anything at all and beets are kind of like they're closer to low low on that but they have a little bit um they do yeah spaghetti squash same thing it would be like they have some spaghetti squash but it's way 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 less than pasta so way to go you guys so like some other ones would be cauliflower celery don't forget those like pea pods radishes kohlrabi jicama eggplant don't he said eggplant let's see what else we got asparagus that's a good one uh mushrooms uh rutabaga peppers yeah arugula <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. I'm just seeing if we turnips, tomato, switch hard. We got some long beans. So all of those would be ones that, you know, like, so there really are a lot of foods then that you can eat, um, that don't really raise your blood sugar. So just trying to balance them out with the other things then would be good. Seminole pumpkin. There's one known for us. Bok choy. Look at you guys come up with all this stuff. Okay. So yeah, there'll be no problem. You guys, <laughs> you guys will have to, we should have a potluck on our next class. Okay. So then thinking, did I just go ahead? Okay. Yeah. So you got that foods with no carbohydrates. Okay. So these would be like the cheeses, the eggs and the oils, and then 
non-starchy vegetables who are very low. So whole grains, so you're like, okay, so if they, <laughs> if carbohydrates, so did you guys know that a whole grain piece of bread, a whole wheat piece of bread and a whole wheat piece of, or a whole wheat, and a piece of white bread, they both have 15 grams of carbohydrates. So you might think to yourself, you're like, okay, they have the same amount. Like, why can't I just eat the white one? <laughs> so what does the whole one have that could actually help you that the white one does not? Yeah, way to go, Jacqueline. Yeah, so more fiber. So good job, you guys. Okay, so um, yeah, and they're the same kind of, um, like kind of carbs, I guess, in a way, but the whole grain one, just think of it like, okay, there's a whole grain, right? And so a long time ago, there was a whole grain. He grew in the ground, he still does. And so then there's the bran on the outside and then the germ in the middle that are dark colored. So what they found out a long time ago is that they could make fluffier bread sometimes without that brown part and so way back when they took off the brown part and they took out the germ and they also found that the white bread lasted a really long time and so that was good for people um, because the germ has healthy fats and so that's helpful when you don't have a lot of fridges and things like that right <laughs> for your bread so then um that's why people started making white bread and then People got used to it and made it, it was like only for the rich so that everyone was like, oh, I want white bread because only the rich people could afford to do that. And so it's really funny because the one that's better for us is then, then we figured that out later that we were taking off the parts that were actually good for us. And so then we got everybody used to the white bread and wanting the white bread. And then we're like, oh no, wait a second. So that's why, so if we could go back to the whole grain, and that's why the whole grain breads are darker is because they have that bran and the germ on there. And the bran has a ton of fiber, so that helps slow down your blood sugar from spiking. And then the germ has healthy fats. So it's, and vitamin E and B vitamins and protein. So it's like, it's so much better if you can get the whole grains. So just, I wanted to mention that. So it's like, Here's your blood sugar on the right. It's like that up and down, like if you're eating like white uh, white pasta or white rice and things like that. And so it's like having brown rice or having whole grain bread is something like, you know, your blood sugar won't go up as fast. So then there's like less people at the door at the same time. So it's like thinking about that insulin with that door and having trouble. It's like the white bread, it just comes all on one time, but the fiber helps slow it down. So the people come like over time. Okay. Okay. We're going. <laughs> All right. So then what will work for you? So it's definitely individualized. And then be curious, you know, pay attention to how a particular meal or snack affects your blood sugar. Like, like we were talking about with the watermelon. And then, you know, check your blood sugar to see how the food or meal affects you. Like sometimes you'll be able to feel it, but some people cannot feel it when it's really high. You know, maybe they just walk around like that and you get used to it. And so that's why it's really important to check every once in a while. And that can help you in future decisions. So that guy I told you about with the watermelon, he said, you know, he really has trouble eating that. So now he just eats that when he's having a meal. So, you know, the meal, the rest of the meal helps slow that um, watermelon down <laughs> from going all at one time um, into blood sugar. So, um, and it's mostly water, but it does have um, then, you know, what it does have is um, some sweet fruit sugar. So, okay, so makes, so certain foods would be better eaten with fat or fiber or protein. So, you know, if he had the watermelon with like some nuts, that would be great. That would really help him. So thinking about like the foods can help you stabilize your numbers too. So that's like, if I'm gonna have a white piece of bread, it'd be way better if I had that white piece of bread with something like peanut butter to help so it doesn't go into the glucose as fast. And the same thing about, um, I mean, in, it would be honestly, like if you had jelly beans and Snickers, um, say you got those in your Halloween basket, it would be way better for a diabetic to have the Snickers because the Snickers has the peanuts, yeah, and the fat and where the jelly beans are just straight up sugar. So do you guys kind of see how that really makes like, I mean, just like trying to have more foods at one time can really help. Yeah, watermelon with feta cheese. That's a really good one. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Okay, we're moving on. You guys are like, let's get to the family feud. Okay. So physical activity, I just wanted to say that is really awesome. That would be my other big tip is that if you have high blood sugar, that by moving, you can usually bring it down. 
Now, there's sometimes when you do strenuous exercises, it ca can cause some people to go up and then go down. Um, but for the most part, moving helps that door open better. So it helps the insulin work better. It's like, it's yeah, it really does. That's just what it does. It helps the door open better so that the uh, energy can flow into those cells easier. So it's like, if you can take a walk after the meal, it can really help that like get into the cells and stuff like that, or just moving, standing up and sitting down, they've even showed made a difference. So just anything you can do throughout the day to move, like, you know, and try to like move throughout the day, just that can help you a ton to get your blood sugar at a normal level. So it's kind of cool, I guess, what it can do. So overall tips that can help, just choose whole foods over the highly processed foods when you can, because that's great for your heart. And then try to have those non-starchy vegetables, increase your fiber. We got that, right? Uh, minimize added sugars and then the refined grains. So I put that picture on the left there. It's um, one of the gas stations had this in their flyer. And so they were serving that. I was like, where's the color on that, right? There's no fruits and vegetables in that. So if you could take something like that and just, you know, maybe um, try to have like turkey, you know, the egg is great. Maybe having a whole wheat English muffin or a whole wheat bagel instead. Um, and just remembering, you know, the bagel <laughs> would be a lot of carbohydrates in one. Did you guys know that one bagel, like the top and the bottom, equals four slices of bread? If you have the normal sliced bagel, it's that many carbohydrates. So, um, yeah, that's a tough one for us. But if, okay, so then I would just say like whole wheat English muffin or and the eggs wouldn't raise your blood sugar either with the meat. But if you could get some vegetables on there, that would really help your heart get some color. Yeah, or eat half the bagel, right? <laughs> okay, so then you're like, okay, so let's be real here. What about if I want pizza or lasagna or something like that or cake? You're like, it doesn't really fit in the my plate situation. And so if you think about that, a lot of the mixed foods like pizza and lasagna, they are mostly protein and they are mostly carbohydrates. So if you put those two together, then they basically take over the starchy and the protein part of the plate. So it's like, then you still need vegetables. So that'll help balance it out. So say you put lasagna on one half and like a salad on the other half, that would be great. Um, yeah. Okay, so, and if you have pizza, then you could look at it and you're like, well, I got vegetable pizza. And so is the pizza made up of half vegetables? Because if it's not, maybe you should add some, okay? And if you're having thick crust, you know, just remembering that, you know, maybe it's a little bit extra on the starchy section. So be careful. So, yeah. And he said, what if it's cauliflower crust? So that would be, um, yeah, you're doing pretty well there then. It's cauliflower and egg usually and cheese. So cauliflower doesn't really raise your blood sugar. Either does egg, either is just cheese. So you don't really have to worry about that kind of crust for um, raising your blood sugar. So that could be a... Good one. Yeah. Um, the other option, some people do like um, eggplant pizzas or something like that. You know, you roast a slice of eggplant and put cheese on there and tomato sauce. Um, and that would be, um, you know, very good. Also, some of the tomato sauces have some sugar added. So I, I know really you guys are just going to give up. But um, so if you want cake, right, um, that would be something then you should like, okay, think about that. I'm going to need to take out the starchy part in my meal and have less of that because you gotta, um, you know, you don't want all that glucose at the door at the same time. So thinking about if you want dessert at the meal, you can definitely have it, but then you'd want to subtract like pasta, you know, you don't want to have way less, if any, you know, of like pasta or rice or bread, or if you're having like a ton of fruit and then you definitely wouldn't want a sugary drink or I wouldn't recommend it because that would take up a lot of that. So <laughs> you kind of see, or maybe have less tortillas and then you're like, do I have to have vegetables at breakfast? No, but they can help. So at least try to have two food groups at breakfast. So maybe not just like a big bowl of oatmeal. Like the oatmeal is great. It's a whole grain, but it's all grains, right? So maybe you could add um, a little bit of some pecans in it or something like that. Or you could add some fruit that might have a little bit of fiber like blueberries and they, blueberries have less sugar. Or you could have an egg, which would ha wouldn't raise your blood sugar with... Um, spinach and tomatoes and avocado right that'd be really good like that one on the bottom so thinking about just things like that and there's no way reason you can't have a salad for breakfast so just fyi that's an option <laughs> so here i just have a couple of pictures and then we'll just span down the last amount of time playing some family feud here
Okay, so here's kind of, I'm just trying to show examples of how you could get like a half, um, half vegetables and have like a good amount on your meal, okay? So these would all be pretty healthy plates here. Pretty good for you. Kind of cool, huh? So, you know, what's the starchy food on the right there? I don't know if you can tell. Oh yeah, Jacqueline, flax seeds in the oatmeal would be really good. Potatoes, yeah, good job, you guys. So the potatoes would be the one there. So that's why they substituted that for, you know, like a different starch. And then beans, you know, they're really good for your heart. You see how they do have to put the beans in place of that starch though, but it would be like an excellent starch for you. <laughs> and then thinking about it too, it doesn't have to be on a plate, right? It could be on a bowl. And so you see the one on the left, it's kind of like a um, burrito bowl, kind of like, or a, um, like an Asia bowl. And then you would have maybe half of your, half of it would be like peppers and um, vegetables and things like that. And then you could have, um, yeah, you could, if you had wanted to have a little bit of rice, you could, uh, but it's a lot of vegetables. So kind of nice. Okay. Moving on. Just a couple other ones kind of show you, see how they put the corn in the starchy section, even though it's not grain. And then on the left we have cornbread. So then the right one, if you think about it, you know how sometimes you, you go to like a Mexican restaurant and it's like a rice and beans and tortillas. So if you can try to choose things like salsas and um, the avocado and thinking about lean proteins um, or some grilled peppers and things like that or salad, that would be really good. And then just trying to keep the tortillas and beans and the rice, you know, into a smaller amount and thinking about, yeah. Got that one. And here, somebody after the class, they actually sent me a picture of their plate. I was like, eh, she's got it. <laughs> kind of like, you know, half vegetables and stuff. She could probably add a protein a little bit more on there. Unless maybe that ha salad has some. And then here's a couple other people did the same thing. So the other one was like a, the definite burrito bowl, right? And then the other one, just you could see like the veggies and like uh, chicken or fish on that one. Okay. So let's, uh, we just have a couple minutes left, but let's play Family Feud. What do you guys say? Okay, so you realize that you guys are all on one side, but we're just gonna play in the chat. And so can you guys just help me answer these? So what foods, foods, <laughs> what what do you consume that has carbohydrates? What foods have carbohydrates? So yeah, she's got it. Dairy, Dairy you guys are like right away. <laughs> like, <laughs> or like getting that one all the way. Pasta, rice, bread, dairy, milk, yeah. corn, potatoes, kachum, sweets. Yeah, you guys almost forgot it. I got some people here too. They're helping me out. Donuts. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet potatoes, do dairy, yam. I think you definitely got five. Good job, you guys. Way to go. So I'm trying to think if we even if we got all the food groups. Falafel, yes, it does. Okay. So falafel, if you guys know it, it's uh, made of chickpeas. So examples of non-starchy vegetables. Okay, you guys got this. So if you can just name five. Broccoli. Everyone's like, broccoli. Yes, that's a really good one. I got to tell you. You think kids don't like it, broccoli, but it's one of the favorites. I, I used to work with kids. They're like, broccoli. Right. So squash, not winter squash, though. So all the summer one would work. Carrots, peppers, onions. You guys are doing really awesome. Tomatoes, asparagus. Yeah. <laughs> Think of how well we could eat here. Okay, edamame. Edamame is pretty low. It has a little bit. But I might, you know, I'm going to have to recheck that one. I think it might have a little bit of carbs. But lower than other ones. Okay, so now starchy vegetables. There's the three main ones. And then there's the two we got to watch a little bit. Okay, so starchy ones. Good job on the green beans. That's one that's non-starchy. Okay, so corn. Yes, we got one. Corn. Did I miss other stuff? Corn. Monica's like corn, definitely. Um, potatoes. Yep, potatoes and peas. So those are the three big ones. And then what are two other starchy vegetables that? Sweet potatoes, yes. Oh, good to know. Thanks, Steve. He's saying edamame is pretty low in carbs, so that's good. We like that one. Yams. Winter squash. Yes, winter squash. And then there's one more that starts with a B. That's actually a vegetable. 
It's also a carbohydrate and it's also a protein. It's the only food that's in three groups. <laughs> beans, way to go, Jacqueline. Denise, you got it too. Yeah, so beans are starchy, except for the green beans. Except for, the green beans. Except for green beans, yeah. Green beans, we're good to go on the, all you can eat. <laughs> so examples of ways you can increase the amount you move every day. And the survey says, okay, thanks, Steve. So he's saying edamame is about the same as green beans. I'm going to have to, yeah, thank you for telling me that. I was thinking it was more like the other beans, so I need to recheck. So you could take the stairs today. That would be good. Walk during commercials if you're watching TV. Good, I, good, good, good. Like walk in circles. Not to the kitchen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Stand here in your presentations. Physical activity. Park far away. Good job. Park far away, yes. Silver sneeze. Okay, exercise class. That'd be great. The parking one really helps, right? We all have to like yeah, probably go somewhere, right? Water aerobics, if you don't have to go somewhere, get up every 30 minutes. I need to tell my dad that one sometimes. Okay, good job, you guys. Those are definitely, I think you got five. They're like, let's move on. Okay, foods that are whole grains. Okay, you guys can do this now. This would be five foods that are whole grains. What do you think? Whole wheat bread. So not just wheat bread, it has oh, to be yeah. have the whole. Whole, because you know, the wheat bread is also made out of wheat. It's just not whole. Yeah, it's good. Oatmeal, quinoa. Good job. Okay, yes, whole grain. So what is a whole grain? <laughs> brown rice. Yes. Okay, so we got brown rice. We got oatmeal. We got quinoa. Can you guys name some other ones? Whole wheat bread. So wheat bread, only if it's whole. Barley. Yes. Farro. Amaranth. Way to go. Then there's buckwheat and farro. Yes, farro. Um, what is the other one I'm trying to think of? Uh, Frike. Millet, you guys know that millet too? I don't know, millet, yeah. Try the bird seed, it's really good actually. <laughs> couscous is only if what? Couscous, what does it have to be? <laughs> no, whole grain, yes. So it has to be whole wheat couscous. Do you know couscous is actually just a really small pasta? So it could be white or whole wheat. So it's like, yeah. When I first was becoming a dietitian, I learned that and I was like, what, really? Because you think of it as like a whole grain. I'm with you, I understand. Okay, so things that you can add to your day. This is the last one, you guys. What does the survey say? Things to add to your day that can help you manage your blood sugar. What could you do to help you manage your blood sugar? Manage your plate. Yes, manage your plate. Space out your meals, way to go. Have whole grains, yes. Increase fiber, walk, exercise, right? Move. Oh, you guys are good. Spread the carbohydrates throughout the day. Plan your meal. Yeah, that would be awesome because then you'll know, like, you'll be like, okay, what am I having with this rice? Eat small meals throughout the day. Yes. Good job, you guys. And then the other one I would say is checking your blood sugar. That can help you manage it. And that continuous glucose monitor definitely could. So talk to your doctor about one of those if you want. And then taking your medicine. Okay and find which foods that work for you. So last thing, which foods on this thing here have carbohydrates? Believe it or not, I know. It it's mostly fat. Mostly, well, that's true, because the way it is, yeah. Um, beans have carbs. Yes, the El Paso, the taco shells. You know, the sour cream is mostly fat, actually, so it's kind of a tricky one. Taco I'm gonna, I need to double check on me sour cream. I don't think sour cream has hardly any. It's mostly fat, pretty sure. Um, yep, got um, that carbohydrate. <laughs> I'm all double checking now. Got me all, yeah, Woo. Okay, so one tablespoon of sour cream has 0.3 grams of carbohydrates. So like, yeah, it's basically more like a fat. Okay, and then so the, Okay, so which foods have carbs? So in summary, the olives, no, they're fat. Um, the lettuce, not really. The pepper, no. The the seasoning mix, probably not unless they add sugar in there. And sometimes they do, so you check that. The shells, yes. Sharp cheddar, no, because it's mostly fat and protein. The El Paso sauce, you know, that one actually did. It, they added some sugar in there. And um, then the vegetarian, 
beans, yes. The other beans, yes, because they're, you know, they have carbohydrates, they have energy. And then the sour cream, no, not really, unless you have maybe a really lot, but that's probably true with all of them. So you guys did a really, really, really awesome job. This was probably the most fun chat group I ever, <laughs> like you guys were really fun to have. So I really appreciate it. I'll send a survey and then I can send, I'll send out my plate handout too. And if you guys have any questions, um, I'll try to stay on. Thank you guys so much for coming. You made it the entire hour. Good job. <laughs> that was a lot of diabetes. Thank you, Gal. Thank you guys. And please feel free to email if you have any questions. Thank you for coming. Ready? Thank <laughs> you.